Naturally, when we acquire that mind, we acquire it with all these three qualities. Our mind is outgoing, our mind is fickle, mind always wants to think, keep on thinking of one thing or other. And so, in order to provide for this nature, they had to devise a certain uh, way of controlling it. How to control it? All right. Let it go. Let it be. Suddenly we cannot overnight ask it to stop its entire nature. You cannot kill the mind. All right. Let it go on. But if you are trying to rear up a little goat or a nice eh, lamb or a sheep and it gets into the habit of eating all types of things, eh, garbage here and there, chewing of paper, chewing of cloth. Eh. So what do you do? It has to eat. But if I let it loose, it goes everywhere and then maybe nowadays if it goes into uh, uh, neighboring farmers' things, it, it may die of poison eh? because we put so much poison in what we grow nowadays. So what he did, he tied it, he took it to a nice field, with lots of grass and all that, put a peg on the ground and tied it to a, uh, see, maybe 20, 20 meter or 15 meter rope. So it could browse wherever it wanted but could not go beyond this. So its area was restricted to that which is beneficial and not harmful to it. So, let the mind function, but restrict its area. Try to make it go around only in those things, see, which will not rebound upon you in a negative and a harmful way. That is one of the things that you have to do. And the entire life of a human being is connected with mind. And entire life, therefore, also is part of the process of controlling the mind. If you are eating such foodstuffs that excite the mind and you want the mind to be calm like Buddha's mind, how you can expect it? You must, your food should be such that it is not too exciting. It is non-exciting. See, for example, you want to go to a cocktail party and have uh, socializing with all your business friends and all that. How can you expect to be sober? And as the night goes on, steady on your feet. Huh? And ultimately, if you give rain to it, the alcohol will completely huh, take your mind away and then someone will have to carry you and deposit on your doorstep. God forbid. What happens? A little stuff, a little stuff from a little bottle into a little glass, if it goes, it is able to completely, uh, and in a lesser way, there are many things we intake which little by, little by little, little by little, little by little goes into our system. Grossest portion is eliminated. The next portion, which is not very gross, gets absorbed into our gross body, becomes the blood and uh, our blood cells and nerves and all that. But the quality of the food, the finest portion, the vibration, the quality, it ascends and forms the mind stuff. So if the quality of the food is tamasic, mind also becomes tamasic. If it is rajasic, mind becomes... If it is sattvic, mind becomes very refined, it becomes very subtle and becomes easier to control. So food, I am only telling of one food. But Shankaracharya went one step better. He said, food is something ingested into the body Therefore, you call it food. But so many things enter the body, not necessarily through the mouth and tongue and throat. So many things enter the body through the ear. So many things enter the body through the eyes. So many things enter the body through touch, smell. All these also constitute the food of the human psyche, human individual. 